So the point guard position is a very valuable position in this era of NBA basketball. And today we're gonna to be taking all 30 starting NBA point guards and putting them into a tier list. Now this tier list is also going to kind of project what kind of season they're gonna be having. So keep that in mind when I'm making this. And I do encourage you to comment down below whether you think I was wrong in you know rating these guys. I don't know them all very well. You probably know some of their game better than I do. But without further ado, uh, let's get into the rankings. So first, I wanna start with John Morant. Now we all know John Morant's off the court issues. However, he is a incredible basketball player. He's His finishing is one of the best in the league. He's developing a great outside shot and he's getting really good at setting up his teammates and really puts that Memphis team um, in you know, just about championship contending from here on out. So for that, I'm gonna put him at A tier. Next, we're moving on to Marco Fultz. Now Marco Fultz struggled early on in his a career with injuries and his jump shot however in Orlando he's found his place a nice home where he can slowly you know develop that jump shot as well as his finishing around the bot basket is very good as well as he can really set up his teammates at a high rate and I think he's gonna have a really good season for them they are kind of log jammed at the point guard and the shooting guard position but I think they're gonna find a way to give him real rotational minutes next we're moving on to Drew Holiday now Drew Holiday is a all first team NBA defender guy he was just an all-star last season and he's going to play a great role for the Boston Celtics now in the preseason they had him coming off the bench but I do think throughout the season he is going to be named that starting point guard and he's going to hold it down from then all the way until uh, the playoffs and I think he's going to bring a tremendous upside to this Boston Celtics defense as well as providing them a great load on offense uh, next up we have Spencer Dinwiddie now I'm going to put Spencer Dinwiddie at the B tier because um, he's just very good at everything that involves being a point guard. He can shoot, he can finish, he can pass, he can defend. Like he is the prototypical just all around point guard. And I think he's going to fit really well with the Brooklyn Nets team this year with Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, and Nick Claxton. Um, and I know that Ben Simmons has been playing point guard for them in the preseason, but I can't really trust him just yet to be able to run that position again, especially with all of his health injuries. So for right now, it's going to be Spencer Dinwiddie and he is going to be in the B tier. Uh, next, we have Mike Conley. Now, I think this is the year that Mike Conley is going to, you know, aggress a little bit as well as um, Anthony Edwards becoming this, you know, superstar this season. I do believe that his uh, his minutes are going to go down, his you know his usual rate is going to go down, and overall just his skill and ability is going to progress. Um, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to put uh, Mike Conley at the C tier. Uh, Tyus Jones, and he recently got traded to the Washington Wizards, and I think he's going to have a tremendous year for them uh, moving forward. I think we're going to see a year maybe like you know 16 to 18 points and 10 assists, just because the only two real offensive players are Jordan Poole and Kyle. Kuzma, and then it's going to be Tyus Jones setting them guys up every day and also getting his own buckets on his own. I mean, he was probably the best backup point guard last season there in Memphis. Now he's got a key to his own team that doesn't really have any other real superstar. I think he's gonna, his future rate is going to go up and he's just going to be able to run his own team and have a great year. Um, he could be in the running for most improved player. Obviously, it's really too early to predict that, but for now, I'm going to put him at the B tier. Next, we're going to move on to his brother, Trey Jones. Now, he is going to be the starting point guard for the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, next, we're moving on to his brother, Trey Jones, and he's going to be holding on the starting point guard spot for the San Antonio Spurs as of right now. And with this team really elevating their game this offseason with, you know, internal improvement with Devin Purcell, Kelvin Johnson, and Jeremy Shohan, um, and also adding Victor Webinyama on the draft. I think this team is actually going to be trying to compete for something this year. And I think Trey is going to step up to that and elevate and re and be, you know, show some potential that we know that he has. However, I can't put him anywhere higher than the C tier because he hasn't really shown us a whole lot yet, but I'm very excited for um, his production this season. Next, moving on to Bradley Beal. Now, I'm not too certain if Bradley Beal or Devin Booker is going to be starting a point guard. I've heard more uh, Bradley Beal, but then some other sources say Devin Booker. I'm just going to run with Bradley Beal to have them try to keep Booker in his natural position as a shooting guard. And for Bradley Beal, we know, uh, you know who he is as a player. And, you know, he's going to be a guy getting 25 points a game like he was with Washington. That's kind of up... Um, in question but i do think he's gonna have a phenomenal year this season i think he is going to take some time to adjust to the point guard position but i do think he's still gonna average well over 20 points per game 
um, and be very efficient, efficient offensive player for the Suns team. And for right now, I'm going to put him on the... We have Trey Young. Now we know his defensive liability. He's probably the worst defender in the NBA given his size and this is overall effort effort however he's still a guy that's going to average close to 30 and 10 and he's the engine that runs that Atlanta Hawk offense he does have some haters but the guy is putting up historical numbers almost every single year and I've I can't put him anywhere lower than a so a is where he's going to land uh, next we have Delangelo Russell now he had some good stretches for the Lakers last season and he also had some pretty bad stretches for the Lakers um, I really can't put him in B tier because I do think Markel, Spencer, and Tyus Jones are all better options than him. So I'm going to have to put D'Angelo Russell in the C tier. Hopefully he has a good season and he's able to move up. But right now I think C tier is fitting for him. Next we have LaMelo Ball. Now this one's pretty difficult honestly because I think he's going to have another uh, inefficient shooting year. Just because um, the Charlotte Hornets are kind of a mess right now. They're under a lot of scrutiny for drafting Brandon Miller and they got JT Thor, Miles Bridges. Like they've got a whole bunch of drama around that team too. And I think LaMelo just kind of go into this season expecting to not be good again and to shoot a bunch of shots. However, LaMelo Ball is a 25 and 10 guy on most nights. So I'm gonna put him in the eight tier. Next, we have Russell Westbrook from the Clippers and probably some you know Russell Westbrook fans are not gonna like me for this, but I can't put him higher than the C tier. I mean, we've seen his inefficient shooting. We've seen his turnovers. Uh, he can really run an offense at some points but it's just his value it just isn't there anymore as he's aging and i just can't really put him higher than c i think all the guys in b are going to have a way better season than he will especially playing with Kawhi Leonard and paul george if they stay healthy russ is going to be a third option and we saw what he was like as a third option now with Kawhi and pg out of the game russ could go on and give you a 20 and 10 but that's if he's the only good player really on the starting lineup with those two, he's not gonna fit in great as a third option, so he's gonna be in the C tier. We have Damon Lillard, and based off the season Lillard had last year, um, averaging 32 points, shooting incredibly from three, and you know just being Damon Lillard, I'm gonna put him in the S tier category. Now, some people might disagree because of his defense, but he's just an offensive juggernaut in himself. And playing with Giannis Antetokounmpo, I think it's just going to elevate his game. The his team is going to get stops this year. People doubling down on the Giannis, focusing on him in the paint. They're going to help off a of Lillard some nights, and Lillard's going to get hot. Um, I think Lillard has a potential to average 34, 35 points a game this season. I know that sounds kind of boldish. But, uh, but I think it's definitely possible given the offensive structure of that Bucks team and just how good defensively they're going to be like they are every year. Next, Scoot Henderson. Uh, whenever I do these videos, I always put rookies at C. Um, you know, can't go too high, can't go too low. Uh, when I do my center video, I'm going to put Vic at C because he hasn't played a single NBA game yet. I'm not saying he can't move up to A or B, but for Scoot, um, I'm gonna put him at C because I haven't seen what he's done yet in a professional regular season game. So C is where he's going to lie. Next, we have Tyler Halliburton. I'm gonna put him as A as well. Um, Halliburton is the engine of the Indiana Pacers offense. He can give you a 20 and 10, um, setting up his guys really well. He's had games where he's had close to 20 assists. Um, he's probably one of the best. He's probably top three passers in the league at this point. I mean, he is really making a lot of guys on his team look very, very good. And his shooting is great, his finishing is great. He just needs to figure out a balance between when to take the shot and when to pass up on the shot. But again, he was an all-star for the first time last season, and I think that trend is going to continue for Tyrese Halliburton. Next, moving on to CJ McCollum. Now, I'm gonna have to put him on the beats here. He's a good offensive player, but he's not a great one. Doesn't really provide you that much on defense and his playmaking is getting better, but it's not like this phenomenal playmaking setting up his teammates all the time. I do believe he will be playing a point guard all season this year. And I do believe he's gonna get them a lot of good points and a lot of good buckets down the stretch. Um, but I can't put him on the A tier category. Next, moving on to Steph Curry. Uh, S tier, not really much to talk about there. Uh, best shooter in the league, offensive engine in himself. Uh, had to guard him half court. You guys know Steph Curry moving on. Town Horton Tucker. Uh, I think he's going to be the point guard over there in Utah. I know they have uh, Colin Sexton and THT. Colin Sexton is more of like a two guard to me. Um, and maybe they just say whatever and just run 
THT at point guard for most of the season just to see what his actual potential is because uh, you know we haven't really seen him let loose yet for more than a couple game stretches at a time so maybe this season the Jazz kind of push all their chips in on him and just let him run point guard for most of the season but because of what we've seen from him so far I have to put him in D I would say he's gonna be the worst starting point guard in the league this year uh, next we have uh, Jamal Murray now in the regular season it might be a B guy but given his playoff output is last year uh i can't put him any less than eight here i mean he absolutely cooked the lakers in the conference finals and i think he's going to carry that momentum into this season and um probably uh make his first all-star appearance this year as now he's fully recovered from the acl injury and he is an nba champion next we have dennis schroeder uh he's going to be in the c tier um his offense can look great at night but he can also go 0 of 9. his defense is always going to be good for his size um, and his playmaking is about average from the point guard spot. He's a pretty much average overall point guard. His scoring can go in the droughts, but he can catch hot. Uh, but I think our Toronto Raptors team, it's really the only option they got at point guard. And we're just going to have to see what he does all season. Next, Kyle Lowry. Got to put him at C. I think the only real positive he brings to an NBA team right now is his three-point shooting on some nights and his overall leadership. I mean, he's old. He's injury prone. Um, his defense isn't there anymore. He, his offense isn't there anymore. Catch and shoot, three point shooter, and leading the young guys, um, you know, right and wrong in the basketball court. Fred Van Leet, uh, I think, is a good B category. Yeah, he's paid like an S tier guy, but um, listen, his finishing is okay. His playmaking is pretty good. His three point shooting fell off a cliff last season, um, so it's really hard to predict what his season is going to be like this year. Uh, now they have a lot more floor spacing in Houston between Jalen Green and Jabari Smith. Um, we'll just have to see how his three-point shot is. If he gets back up to a close to 40% three-point shooter, we could be talking at, you know, eight tier for him again. But based off last season, um, I don't really see much of a jump, especially since there's a lot of ball there in Houston now with Eamon Thompson and Jalen Green especially. So I think B tier is exactly where he needs to be. Uh, next we move on to Darius Garland. Now I think Darius Garland is a A tier point guard. I think he's going to have a better season this year than he did last. Um, because the previous season he was an all-star. This year he had to learn to share the ball with Donovan Mitchell. Uh, um, but I think now that I have a year together, I think Garland's going to really know where to fit in on this offense when Mitchell has the ball. Um, so I think it's going to put him back up into A tier and potential all-star conversations. Next, Luka Doncic, uh, another one of those S tier guys. I mean, what else do you want from the guy? He's a walking triple-double. Um, he can hit big shots. He can drop 70 in a game pretty much. Um, he's going to have to learn to play with Kyrie Irving, vice versa. And I don't think his Mav team is going to be very good, but I do know Luka is going to get his own every single night and is going to be an MVP conversation if this team can kind of stay above the plan. Next is Cade Cunningham. I think this is Cade Cunningham's breakout year. However, I haven't seen enough from him to guarantee he's going to be an all-star this season. So I'm putting him at B tier for now. He could prove me wrong in the first 10 games, honestly. Um, but unfortunately, he's just going to get the B tier category for now. He's great on defense. He's a great playmaker. His finishing is getting better, but his outside shooting still isn't there. Uh, still isn't at the rate you want from an A tier caliber guy. And until he proves to me that he can shoot the three ball um, at an efficient clip, then it's going to be a whole new conversation with Kate Cunningham. But he's got a lot of potential. He's still young and he's going to be an all-star in this league. Next, De'Aaron Fox. I think De'Aaron Fox proved that he is an A-tier guy. Uh, as I'm see, I'm starting to run out of space here in the A-tier. I don't really don't know what else I'm going to do. Um, but Fox, first time all-star last year. Kings were the third seed. Fastest guy in the league. One of the best finishers. His shooting is getting a lot better. Um, overall, just phenomenal player. He's definitely going to do great things this year as well. I really don't know what he's going to be like. I can't imagine this season is going to be too pretty for him. I'm going to put him at the beats here because until he gets traded, uh, he's probably going to walk out there for Philly and not really compete. That's just, we've seen that before in Houston and in Brooklyn, where whenever he wants to get traded, he stops competing. And I think that's going to happen again in Philly. So if he's not really competing, but he's playing, he's not going to be that very good. Um, so B tier is where Harden's going to be. He's obviously an A tier guy, but in terms of this season's production, B tier. Shea, uh, I'm going to put Shea as an A tier. Um, the two way capabilities of this guy is insane. He averaged 31 points last year, led the Thunder team to, I believe, an eight seed. 
And this year, who knows what his ceiling is going to be. I can imagine he's going to be another 30 point per game scorer, as well as setting up his teammates and being in the engine of this OKC offense, which is going to be very good this season. Next, we have Jalen Brunson, who is uh, eight tier at this point. I mean, he led to Knicks to a second round uh, exit this season. Uh, he really brought him out um, of the playoff drought and they were actually like really competing and he was a point guard they've been needing for quite some time now and i think he's going to either put him if he puts up the same number they did last year i would still qualify that as a tier but if he steps it up like he stepped up in the playoffs i mean he's definitely going to be an all-star and you know fighting for you know fighting for the knicks to you know really make a strong playoff push and finally, we have Kobe White. Now, Lonzo Ball should be here, but he's going to be injured all season. Uh, Kobe White, in my opinion, has is kind of an inefficient shot creator, um, but now he's going to be starting as a point guard, and that's kind of scary for the Bulls, in my opinion. But if he's able to prove he can shoot high, you know, efficiently, then he's going to be a B-tier guy. But right now, uh, C-tier for me on Kobe White, just because the shot efficiency isn't there. Um, as well as if the playmaking ability is below average to be a point guard. And that wraps up this ranking. Um, I know my list is not perfect. I'm seeing that now. However, if you guys did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe and also comment down below what you think. If you guys disagree, let me know. If you agree, also let me know. And uh, stay tuned. I'm going to be doing all five of the positions uh, this week in this category. And I'll see you guys in the next video.